Good morning guys, I got it. So I can't remember if I actually told you guys or not, but if you guys go back a couple videos to where we were in the state park, you'll recall that I attempted to paint the uh, con the outside condenser grill, the guard, I guess it's called, and I totally botched it because I painted it on a flat surface and I used a roller and it was the latex paint and it actually dried in between the little holes and stuff so it like totally covered it anyway it was a mess i tried to bring it back to life but it just all the paint was gunking up on me and stuff and i just i was like all right whatever i'm gonna just have to order a new one so this is uh the new package so this was a little bit more money than i was anticipating for it to be but this was like one of the only places that I could find it from. I forgot the name of the place. It's like Don's or something. I'll put a, a, the name of it up above and I'll put the link down below to their website. Um, but if you guys are looking for shuttle bus parts, this guy has a ton of stuff on his page. Uh, this is the Trans Air model because this is a Trans Air bus and the, well, the Trans Air air conditioning system for the bus rather. Um, so that's the model right there and everything. So it's identical, same size, 49 and a half long by 11.25 in width. And uh, it looks pretty good. I like the way they packaged it. This was originally in a box, but I picked it up on the motorcycle and the box was just way too big for the motorcycle. So I had Sam sit behind me and we had it running long ways. We looked like Buzz Lightyear going down the road trying to catch flight. <laughs> it was actually pretty funny. Um, but I am gonna paint it. I'm gonna be using some Rust-Oleum. This is the sand color. This is the closest that I found to match the bus. I am not gonna roll it again. I am not doing that mistake. So we are gonna spray paint this outside. I'm gonna leave it on this part. That way I can just do it nice and smooth. I only have to do the one side because you know the other side's obviously gonna be sitting on the inside of the bus. So I'm gonna bring this outside and start hitting it. I am very excited because I really, you know, I put it up originally when I first painted it just to see if I would like how it looked and it looks really nice when it's painted with the tan it kind of matches the bus so let me get outside we're gonna spray this down and then i'll put it up all right guys installed it and painted it it looks really really good let me step back here a little bit so you guys can see a better picture that looks awesome just got to get a couple more screws i don't know what happened this this i'm missing a couple i have one two i'm missing three four screws so but i still have like six or seven of them holding it in so it'll be fine for now I'll just run to the store grab a couple screws and we'll be good to go but i got an emergency job that somebody just messaged me about so i gotta go run over to lakeland and then uh i'll get back with you guys once i finish that so today i did a little bit of a project so the rest of the bus is black and tan and my chrome or i don't know silver bike rack was just not looking good it wasn't matching or anything so i started painting it we're going flat black on this <clears throat> Don't mind this little part, that's where the reflectors are gonna sit, cause now I'm definitely gonna have to put some reflectors on there so nobody hits the bike rack. But it looks way better black. It was just so, so beat up, I guess. And you know, with the exhaust and stuff, it was just making it so dirty. So obviously I still have quite a few coats to hit it. Um, at least one more or two more, but it's gonna look really good when it's done. And uh, pretty, pretty proud of this accomplishment. So we're going to go run out. Sam has to go grab a couple things from the store. And then we're going to come back and I want to talk to you guys about something. Well, guys, I didn't exactly finish the uh, motorcycle carrier. I have one coat on there right now. And we had to go out and the sun set so damn quick today. So I didn't really get enough time to like hit it again in between coats before the sun went down. But I'll finish it up tomorrow. It is looking pretty damn good, though. It's starting to actually match the bus and it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. I also have to get a... Uh, probably get a couple reflective um, like stick on things you know that way at night when people's like lights hit it and stuff they'll see it anyway um, I want to talk to you guys about something and I think it's really important because a lot of people that are getting into this lifestyle are are new you know and it'll be a first-time purchase and stuff like that and I, I kind of have a story to go behind it a little bit as well oh hi Sam nice <laughs> of you to join the video and I know that a lot of people, you know, when you want to get into this lifestyle, you're excited and then when you see something that's in your price range, you get very excited and then you just want to jump right into it. But we're, we're doing this video to teach you, to tell you what to look for. That way you don't get screwed by guys like that we just, right. that we just did. Learn from my mistakes as well. So uh, basically yesterday I was, we were hanging out doing stuff on the bus. I was actually about to do the um, motorcycle carrier and I actually had just finished doing the side condenser grill and this guy calls me who owns a 
um, RV. He, he pretty much flips RVs more or less. But he buys these pretty shoddy RVs from all over the country and he brings them back to Florida where they're worth money. Uh, worth more money, I think, more or less, you know, because a lot of people RV down here. Uh, and a lot of people are also looking for homes down here. You know, there's a lot of homeless or about to be homeless, so they can't really afford too, too much. So this guy buys RVs and. You know, he fixes them to where they're like subpar decent or holds us high, there whatever. It, lo it looks good to the eye, a right. quick glance. Right, like someone who doesn't know what to look for or what yeah. to feel for. And, uh, you know, they'll be like, oh, wow, this looks great. Okay, I'll take it. So basically, this guy had me come by yesterday and reseal the roof on a Class C motorhome. This is an older motorhome. Um, you know, it, it was it was in really, really bad shape. Yeah. So the first thing you guys are gonna look for if you're gonna buy like a Class C motorhome, especially if it has the front window over the cab area, is for leaks. Because they that front window is notorious for leaking. Um, people don't take care of the caulking that goes around it. It dries out and water gets in it. I personally would just stay away from RVs that have that front window. <laughs> yeah, uh, I would personally stay away from RVs in general. But yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing is the front, the front seal where the cap meets the roof. Uh, they put a seam along that, and that's where they put the rivets or the screws or whatever they're made out of. And then they caulk it. Well, the caulking dries out over time, especially if you live in a hot, dry climate like Florida or Arizona, Texas. So the water will, the, the seam will crack, water will get in, and it'll just go to whatever the lowest point of your RV is. Now on a Class C, it's going to be that front cap area over the cab. And the water's going to go down and it usually sits in one area and it deteriorates the wood. It really makes it loose, it, it breaks apart, turns into nothing, and then you have no support on your front cab over area and nothing is holding it up pretty much. So yesterday, and I'm, I'm telling you this so you guys can kind of get an idea of what happened. So yesterday I go to this guy's RV to get it done. He brings me inside just so I can see, kind of like to see if I can see where the water's coming from so I can make sure I concentrate on one area specifically if it needs it. The whole front cab area of this guy's cab over, uh, the wood ceiling or whatever it is, the uh, Luan board I think it's called, was gone. It looks like he just ripped it down and underneath that is the plywood or whatever kind of wood they use. It was water, the whole thing was water damaged, the whole like thing. Like if you touch it, it would just crumble. Yeah, it was all splintering and super soft. It was really bad. So what he's gonna do is, he's gonna have me seal the roof, which I did, but I did it right where there'll be no more water damage at least. And so I sealed the roof and he's gonna take the wood and put new Lou on board and just cover up that wet wood and all that stuff. So basically now you're gonna have an airtight pocket of wet wood and it's just going to grow mold green mold black mold bacteria and someone is going to get sick on that rv when he does that the wood is so weak that it's not going to hold up that if it does hold it up it's not going to do it for long that whoever buys this thing that thing is going to collapse right on their head yeah because that wood is so brittle that if i i should have taken a picture to yeah. show you guys one one good solid pothole and it'll probably rock that that roof pretty loose unfortunately and someone's gonna get screwed on but either little... way if you buy used you're taking a risk right you're buying you're buying as is where is okay so i see a and lot of don't people believe anybody that they say oh yeah we fixed this we fixed that everything's new don't listen listen when you look at something don't believe anything they're saying don't have trust in anybody so basically this guy like i said he's gonna hide the wood and sell the rv i would love to see how that would look because it's just i don't know like the wood is just so bad and then the you know the water still travels so that when the wood got wet i'm sure that the wood the water is starting to go down other pieces you know down the roof so i'm sure that wood is starting to get dry rotted yeah you can when you look for an rv guys you know you look on the on the ceiling and stuff you can see the the kind of paper or whatever they use it'll start to crinkle it'll start to sag um if you press up on the roof uh, it'll, you know, it'll feel like spongy, you, I guess you could know. say. As soon as you, if you've never touched it, yeah. but if you go and do it, like when, and you'll know what we're talking about. Yeah, like a roof might, you know, have a little give and be good. You know what I mean? It's a, I think it's supposed to, because, you know, you're bouncing around, so it's not going to be stiff. Right. But if you have a little buoyance, it's okay. Right. But if you see it's like mushy or wrinkled, you know, or you can see like water stains on the, on the roof. Um, you know, oh, unless you're smell alone too, you would know. Right, unless you're getting that RV for really, really cheap, uh, and you're you're like a good handy person, and you can replace you know wood and new on board and all that stuff, and electrical possibly because there's electrical running through the roof. I would walk away from it personally. 
Um, you I mean, know. It's, a, it's a good fixer upper if you're handy with stuff like that. But the price that he's charging, he's making it sound like the thing is in mint condition. There's no issues. Yeah, it's an older Class C. I'd probably say it's an early 90s RV. Okay, so that's actually really old for an RV. Unfortunately, RVs are just not meant to, you know, to last uh, a, a very long time. Even back in the day, they're just, they're not built very well. They're built out of wood. Now, something like a shuttle bus or, or a school bus is really ideal. They're built to last. And if, God forbid, this thing ever rolled over, the walls in here, uh, the, the wall itself is fiberglass, but there's steel bars that go across here and across the ceiling. As where an RV, the whole box is, is made out of wood. Thin, thin wood, and as soon as it usually rolls over on its side, the whole thing usually caves in on each other. Yeah. And that's just how they're made. They're made out of cheap, cheap wood. So when you guys are looking for an RV, the water damage thing is the most important. Yeah. Um, you I, gotta I, look inside and out. The yeah. water gets in yeah anywhere and don't think if you're buying from a dealership that that's you know that you know you're gonna be gold and and, and if they say that there's no water damage yeah, that, and that they're really telling you the truth they just want their money when money is involved yeah they'll people tell you change anything. and yeah. we'll say whatever they yeah. want to sweet talk you so when you're looking at an rv if you go back we did rv transport so sean and i are pretty much knowledgeable when it comes to rvs and i'm hoping this video will help you know what to look for so yeah. when you go outside to look at the, an rv walk around the whole thing check the roof that's the issue with a lot of people is a lot of people don't have like the ladders that go up to the roof if you have a ladder bring it because they'll say they don't they'll, they'll say they don't have a ladder mm. that way you can't get up on the ladder yeah. to see it and a dealership will tell you that for liability reasons you can't hop up on the roof and i don't know that might be true but i i wouldn't care i'd walk away then because if they're trying to hide something or whatever then I, i'm not interested you yeah. have to see the roof that it's is a, yeah that is one of the most important parts. If the roof isn't taken care of when you go and look at it, that means they didn't take care of anything else. Yeah, pretty much. So when you're walking around, if you see any bubbling, that's that's water damage. So check around the windows. That's usually where the bubbling starts to happen. Uh, check the seams everywhere. Check your seals around the window. If it's cracking, water is getting into that. When you walk into an RV, just the smell alone, you'll know if there's water damage because it stinks. Yeah, you'll really smell the mold, bad. like that moldy, musky smell. So when you walk in, you know, do like a quick walk around and look, so be like, okay, then touch everywhere. Touch the floor with your feet, press on it, touch the, every corner, yep. to open the cabinet, see if there's any wrinkling in there because there's usually a lot of wrinkles with, with the cabinets. Especially towards that front cab area and the back corners. And touch the wall, make sure there's no soft spots. Legit check every single corner of the RV yeah. to see if there's anything. And then now if you're looking at a unit that's, you know, say like a northern unit, of course you're gonna have like salt issues, you know? Yeah. And you really wanna make sure that you don't have a rusted or rotted out frame. Um, so you gotta check all that. Unfortunately on the shuttle buses, the only complaint I really have is that on shuttle buses, all they do is lay down plywood. If I took the plywood up from this floor right now, you would see right through the bottom. There is no metal like under frame, like in a car that has like a shell. It's it's pretty weird. So if you live in a, like a, a state where there's a lot of salt corrosion and stuff like that, it tends to deteriorate the wood. Um, so you can have soft floors and stuff. That's another thing to check on RVs. Check the floors, yeah, especially in the corners of the walls and stuff. everywhere, um, especially by the toilet. Yeah, by the toilet, all the corners, by the sink and stuff. That's usually where link, uh, leaks happen. And, uh, you know, you just you just really have to keep an eye out on it. You everything. could always hire an RV inspector to come check it out. But yep. my issue is, is if you're paying for him 400 and something dollars. Yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, it is pretty expensive. You're paying it. I'm sure there's a video on YouTube that you could just watch. And I'll that would only be bill. worth it if you're spending thousands, like like a lot of money if on it. If you really RV. know you're going to buy it. Well, not even that. Like, if you're spending a lot of money on an RV, like if you, you know, if you're spending, if you're buying a fifteen hundred dollar RV, you're not gonna spend a, you're not gonna spend five hundred dollars. Yeah, because you already know that something's gonna be wrong with that RV. Right, but if you're, if you're inspecting, if you're looking at a, you know, a fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollar or more, hundred thousand, whatever RV, then yeah, spend the money. Let them, run, they run through everything. Yeah. All the electrical, the LP gas lines. Make sure it's something everything. you really want before paying an RV tech that much money. Because yeah. now, if he checks it and they have all these issues then now that's money you got to put into the RV and if you don't buy that RV now you just gave this RV tech X amount of money and now right but I mean you kind of look at it and you kind of saved yourself from buying a pile yeah but then you also lost money by driving there yeah. and either that or you could 
you know, with that report that he gives you at the end, you could actually use that with the seller and say, well, it needs this, 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 and that. Let's work on a price. And you, and depending on you know what the issues are, you could drop that price that they're asking substantially if they're willing to, or they'll just say no, yeah. and they'll just wait for the next sucker to come that doesn't have an RV tech and right. sell it to them. But at least you didn't get suckered in. Yeah. You know, there's there's so many things that you have to look for. You know, but you know, when you look for something that's drivable. You know, you want to check the oil. You want to make sure it's not it's not sludgy, it's not built up, That's it's not nice jet black. That's what's nice about paying an RV tech too, is that they're good with the motor and stuff. Right, you also want to check transmission fluid, brake fluid. Um, one thing I messed up on the last van that we had, I totally forgot to check the coolant. And when I got into the gas station, I noticed the van was running a little hot. I pulled the cap off the coolant line and it was all sludged up. Yeah. It was really, really bad. And we had to replace the radiator. We were um, so excited about it that we yeah. just bought it, that we didn't really, he, we checked the oil, but yeah. that's all we did. Yeah, oil and transmission fluid I checked. I totally gapped the coolant. So make sure you check all the fluids, everything that stuff's really important. Check tires, check um, the steering, make sure nothing's crazy. You know, you, you want to check, you could check underneath too, if you have like a travel trailer or an RV, check by the wheel wells and stuff. If they ever had a blowout, you can kind of see, you'll see if there's any damage or anything, if, they, if it cracked off a piece of, you know, the siding or it might hit a tank. I've seen countless things where it'll, tires will explode and blow a tank right off, you know, like a freshwater tank or gray tank. There's just so much stuff that you have, you know, they, they have lists, like Sam said, online, where you can literally go through everything. I just kind of wanted to give you guys a quick run through because this guy is, is so, it was really sketchy and I, I was kind of, you know, I like, I need, I wanted the money because we're going up to New York. So I'm trying to save up as much money and I, and I did the roof the right way where there won't be any more leaks. Um, but the fact that he's not going to fix that wood underneath is kind of really, there, there's nothing we can bit. do anyway. You know, it's, the, it's already done. The only thing we can do is just this, shoot a video and warn others. That's it. Yeah. So just, just make sure you guys. I are, mean, he, the whoever he sells it to, he might sell it to the wrong person that really knows how to go back at him and take him to court. You know. Maybe they'll probably just say his boy. He's, he's gonna words. mess with so, he's gonna mess with someone one day. But if he keeps doing cheap stuff like that, he, one day he's gonna meet his uh, maker with that because it's not right to do that to somebody. Yeah. But um, that's that's pretty much what I wanted to touch up on you guys. If you guys have any questions, like, like Sam said, we are pretty knowledgeable with with pre with pre trip inspections on RVs. I mean, we know what to look for for um, you know buses, RVs, schoolies. You know, we're we're pretty good with that stuff now. We've learned a lot over the past couple of years with buying so many vehicles um, and transporting RVs professionally that we we pretty much know what to look for and where the problems are going to start, where they're going to be. So if you guys have any questions, if you guys are looking for a certain vehicle, um, you know, feel free to shoot us an email. Email or write to Sam on Instagram. She's or if you guys are looking at RVs and you want to screenshot it and send me and get ask like what I think about it, because we have people that do that. Yeah. That will message us like because with the roof resealing and they want us to reseal their roof, they'll contact us before they buy the unit asking if it's even worth buying it, and we tell them the truth. I yep. mean, yeah, we lose money from sealing their roof, but I don't need them buying a piece of crap and then they're you know they regret it. Yeah. Sometimes honesty hurts me. <laughs> <laughs> but um because you also got to be careful too is that you know we seal roofs so if you buy an older unit the water might be coming in from somewhere else not just the roof a lot of people don't realize yeah that the seams and the seals around the windows like i can water can get in literally anywhere another very popular spot for rvs to leak especially if it's an older unit and an older unit is like five to seven years or older believe it or not um that's just when they start to like really really go but uh, a, big, a big thing that goes is the gasket for the AC unit on the roof. So basically what happens when they build these RVs, they cut the hole in the roof through the plywood, they put a gasket in, they drop the AC in, the AC kind of presses the gasket out, makes a nice tight seal, but over the years, all the water and, and, and the sun and everything else dry rots, it, it cracks and then water gets in that way, it'll run to wherever the lowest point is again guys, like I was telling you, and then it'll start water damage that way. So. Um, you know, if somebody reseals your roof one day and then you still have a leak or whatever the case is, that would be the next go-to is that AC because that's probably where it's coming from. So just keep that in mind. Like I said, if you guys have any other questions, let me know. I'd be happy to answer all your questions. Uh, but other than that, we're going to end this video here. I hope you guys are all having a great night. Again, stickers are still available. We have some left if you guys are interested. Um, there is a link down below. You can use your credit, debit, or PayPal account and I will send those out the same day probably so 
Hope you guys are all having a great night and we'll see you guys in the next video. And if you're not following us on Instagram, we'll link it down below because we usually update a lot on there too. Yeah.